All right, welcome back to Ox Tools. I'm Tom. So uh, we put out a little video the other night on um, uh, was a work holding indexing problem uh, that a viewer uh, wrote in about, and um, so I was trying out a kind of a new video format for weeknight uh, videos. Um, the longer ones uh, I got to save for the weekends uh, when uh, well, there's just more going on here uh, on the weekends. Um, you know, after work, uh, I can shoot a short one like that and get it processed and uploaded uh, pretty easily. So, uh, anyway, I was kind of test driving a, uh, a shorter format, under 20 minute uh, type video. So, anyway, there's a lot of uh, a lot of comments, a lot of positive response uh, for something that uh, you might take for granted uh, is a simple indexing job like that. You know, if you've been doing this work a long time. Um, you tend not to think about those things in terms of uh, you know how you're going to do it. You just reach for your your normal tool and uh, and you just kind of do it right. So, but there's a lot of folks out there that um, um, they're working in a small garage. They don't have a lot of tooling uh, or equipment or experience even, and uh, um, and their resource uh, for information is over the internet. Uh, maybe they don't do machine work or metal work professionally, um, so their resource, they don't have that connection, you know, they don't work next to another metal worker, right? You know, they, uh, they work in um, some other field, right? And uh, so they don't have access to those folks other than through the internet, right? So anyway, Eric's question really got me thinking about uh, well, gee, if I didn't have all this wonderful stuff, you know, how, how might I do that, right? And kind of get it done. And uh, uh, like I said, I got a positive response and thanks for all the comments, I appreciate it. Now, what a bunch of other people asked about and what I thought we'd shoot another short one tonight about is uh, there was a lot of interest in this uh, uh, multi-axis stop. Um, and I'm gonna zoom in on this and uh, we're gonna talk more about it. Um, since it's the subject of tonight's video, this weeknight video. Um, so the story behind this is um, uh, Royal Products, I guess, used to make one like this, uh, a really nice one actually, but it was, it was fiendishly expensive. And I inquired about it and I was shocked at how much they wanted for it and uh, um, I didn't buy one obviously. But what I did was uh, I made my own. And uh, th so this is quite a while ago now. And uh, so I made this whole, this whole um, uh, multi-axis stop, it was the, the main part of the body here was all bandsawed and filed. And uh, you can actually, pro well, no, that's really marks from, the, uh, from this. But um, anyway, uh, it served me real well and it's really handy because you can move it all around and, and really point it at any angle that you want and change the height really easy. I've never liked those kind that sit flat on the, on the table and then you, you wiggle the rod up and then you slide the rod and it's all done with set screws which is just a, in my opinion, a, a very weak design uh, method for retaining shafts and things like that. Set screws are, it's, you know, it's just a quick, simple idea and it's just not very elegant. Anyway, so this is a, uh, my interpretation of what I saw um, on the, you know, from Royal Products. I don't think they sell them anymore. Um, I haven't looked though in a while. But anyway, we're gonna zoom in on this and, uh, and get a little closer to the action here and uh, actually take this apart and you can see all the different components and how the whole thing's put together. So I thought that'd make a good one uh, and we can just talk about work stops. And then here's the other type that I use. Uh, so these are really the two that I use 99% of the time. And um, um, actually there's one more, maybe, I don't know if I have one. Uh, anyway, I don't think I have one here. Um, anyway, we're going to zoom on this, zoom in on this, and um, and show some close-ups of this stuff here. Okay. Okay. So let's just go ahead and uh, we'll just take this apart, kind of bit by bit here. Let's do the the bottom end here, and that's just the the T-slot nut. And uh, I haven't cleaned this in a while. So you guys get a, a sense of uh, the parts here. All right. There's that, there's the rod. Then we'll take this top end apart here. All 
Okay, so there's all the bits. <laughs> yeah, it's got some crud on it. I'll probably uh, wash it with uh, some degreaser uh, after the video here. Okay, so let's talk about this part first. So this is the main body here, and uh, you know this is. Uh, let me get a let me get a scale real quick. Okay, so um, I went and got a scale. So this part here, it's uh, inch and three quarter. Uh, it's like 45 millimeters. Um, it was sawed out a plate that was uh, inch and three quarter thick, probably two inch to start with. And then I laid all this out and band sawed around all that. Um, and then the overall length is just short of six inches or uh, 150 millimeters. And, um, um, and then it's got slots milled in it. And then the slots, uh, um, it doesn't look like I, I didn't rotate this. Yeah, they're just straight through uh, and wide enough to accept the... Uh, uh, actually, that one's tilted a little bit. How did I do that? Oh, you know, I probably had the end mill in there, and then I just tipped it in the vise and cut a little bit more to get a little more travel. In fact, you can see it. You can see it on the sides here, where there's some uh, some little uh, ripples from the cutting. So I I came in with an end mill like this and milled, and then rotated it a little bit, and then milled a little more, just so I could get more travel out of the. Uh, uh, out of the bolt through there so uh, so there's that part there and then uh, uh, my old toolmaker friend Charlie engraved my name in uh, in it for me a long time ago um, he wanted to do something for me so I said oh yeah go ahead and uh, put my name in there if you want so there's that part so then this is the uh, this is the upper part here it's kind of a captive uh, uh, t-nut here so let's uh, I guess we can put it back together uh, as we go here. So this goes in here like so, in the top, and then we need a, a curved part to bear against that, and that pivots on that. And then we have the rod, the rod clamp here, and it's got you know a groove cut in it off center asymmetrically. And then uh, these little screws here, in fact, they're out of adjustment, is to, when the rod's in here, the idea there is, let's see if I can get it together. In fact, yeah, I need to adjust it. That, that kind of holds that gap parallel, so those need to be adjusted. On the original ones, I think there, were, there was just solid material here, and it was just milled away on this side, and, and I kind of abbreviated that idea and made it a little easier. Uh, um, to make anyway so that's where that ended up okay so then that okay so that one goes on the bottom and then uh, the rod goes here and that goes down like that and then um, now this is just a uh, McMaster car clamping handle that you can reposition uh, by pushing this button in but you know a regular nut would work there also it doesn't really care like that okay so Anyway, and then this can swivel on that and then lock down. And this is just a piece of all thread that's welded in there. This is stainless steel, and that's just welded in there to so that it doesn't come unscrewed. Okay, oop, and I missed a washer out of there. Let me uh, put that back in there. Go to the top. Okay, so there's that. This is a six millimeter rod, quarter inch rod, and I I pressed on a little uh, larger uh, end piece, you know, for putting up against bigger stuff. And then the the opposite end, it's just got a little chamfer on it to reduce the uh, to reduce the area on the end. Okay, so down at this end here, slightly different. So we have a a, a rod, and then these are. Uh, these are three quarters of an inch, um, you know, uh, 20 millimeter rods. And um, so that sits in here and that can pivot. That drops through there and it sits in a little counter, you know, a little flattened area for the socket head screw. 
and then this is the part that sits against the mill and that just has the same radius as that like so and you could make these any size you want there's no reason it's got to be this size in fact uh, a bigger one would be kind of cool you know uh, about I don't know, maybe uh, half again as long. That would be pretty spiffy. Uh, I could get into that. Although I, this one seems to work fine. And then that catches the, whatever T-slot size you happen to have there. So all the hardware here, this is half inch, you know, 12 millimeter uh, uh, bolts. Kind of standard uh, milling machine. You don't want these to wear out on you. Anyway, that's, uh, that's the multi-axis stop there. And then the other... The other stop that I use is one that I made a long time ago when I was just a kid. Um, you know, a little shop project, and this one clamps on the uh, the top jaw of the of the curt. And the you know, it's got a little knurled knob on here, so I can just run it up with my hand. Um, but I I milled a little slot in there that fits the scale. So when I have my uh, 150 millimeter scale. I can just stick it in there and I can and I can tighten it up. I don't have to grab a tool, you know, a tool uh, or go walk and get a tool to to put that on there. So these are the two types I use all the time. And um, and there's the multi-axis, um, the multi-axis deal there. So uh, anyway, throw up a comment if if I miss something on that. Um, you know, this is this accurately laid out with scribe lines uh, on the on the blank and then band sod and then um, I probably milled these flat areas and then and then did the transitions into the uh, uh, into these radiuses here and I do believe that I drilled these holes first and then cut in and finished the tangents by hand so you know anything that you can do on the machine obviously you could do this as a rotary table job too which would be kind of fun if you have a rotary table but if you have a bandsaw you're off and running um, and um, you know you could make these any size any size you cared to make okay and uh, there's the little oh hey it kind of fits on there huh yep it does hey you know what that's a good way to uh, that's a good way to store that huh See, now I just learned something. That's pretty cool. That might be a new place for me to store so my stops are all together. Okay? Okay. Okay, that's it for this installment. Um, we talked about uh, mill stops. And uh, I guess I just wanted to uh, um, offer my condolences to the, uh, the New Zealand sailing team. I guess Oracle uh, spanked them uh, uh, this afternoon in the uh, San Francisco Bay. So everybody at work was jumping and uh, flying around. So uh, uh, my condolences to the Kiwi viewers. Um, um, have a beer on me, please. And, uh, and sorry about that. Better luck next time. Anyway, thanks for watching, guys. And uh, we'll see you again soon.